This brings us to the performance index to enable us um, filter out and effectively select material um, to our design requirements. There's this index called the performance or engineering index. <coughs> and this is basically a, uh, a numerical matrix that gives a good indication or the best indication of the material that best conforms to your design specification or design requirements. Def to define the engineering or performance index, so that is characterized by a capital M, that's equal to the ratio of the variables that you want to do a comparative analysis to identify you know, the best conformance um, to your design requirements. When it comes to you know, looking at the performance index, the performance index is a function of three things. Functional constraint. So the functional constraint will more or less look at loading and parameters. The geometric constraint will look at you know the sizing in terms of the length, the width, the depth, things like that. But the key element here when it comes to CES is the material constraint. And this is where it becomes important to have a good understanding of what are the desired uh, characteristics that you seek in the material for a given design. So we're going to look at this example where we've been given a bicycle frame. So I've modeled the bicycle frame to a truss to look at the loading conditions and to look at which elements are being subjected to are they compressive and um, or tensile load. In terms of the objectives, and it's very important that you make clear what your objectives are. What are you trying to achieve, you know, from um, this exercise? So in terms of this bicycle, um, we're looking at its strength. So we hope to select a material that does not break when um, loaded. We're also looking for a material that is quite stiff so that it doesn't deform or warp out of place. But at the same time, to improve uh, product performance we expect it to be quite light so the the lesser the weight the easier it is for it to generate the needed energy to be displaced faster so these are the objectives in identifying the best material for the bicycle frame So when it comes to the performance index i'm not really going to go too much into the mathematics of this because it's not really important um, all that, all this information has been listed in CES. So it just comes down to having an understanding in terms of what the operational or functional requirements are for your design. But just to illustrate, uh, this uh, metric is an amalgamation of mass uh, equation, which is basically a transposition of the density formula and the stress equation. So once these are amalgamated, they're then compartmentalized in terms of what the uh, functional variable is, what the geometrical variable is, and what are the variables that link to uh, material. When it comes to C, is the focus is to maximize um, the index to indicate the best material that can be considered uh, for a given application. So in terms of deriving the metric, it will give you the content in terms of minimizing the metric. But to UCS, you have to look at maximizing um, the index to identify the best materials that provide the best um, conformance to your design requirements. So this is for strength to mass. So the index when we're looking at strength to mass will be sigma y. So sigma y characterizes the yield strength in this context and rho represents the density so the higher the density the smaller the metric because you know you're increasing the mass so for this to become larger to give you an indication that you are reducing the mass then the density needs to 
be smaller. So that's a simple interpretation of this. There you go. Similar to the previous, we can also look at um, the stiffness to mass. So we're looking at how much the material can withstand deformation. But at the same time, we're also looking at material that exhibit um, considerable lightness to ensure that it doesn't impede um, the performance of the bike when work is placed in to move it from one point to the other. I think naturally, you know, everyone would think, you know, the denser the material, the better it is to withstand uh, deformation. However, the more mass the structure contains, the more work will be required in moving or displacing the bicycle from one point to the other. So it's important that while we're also looking at, you know, material that acts a bit, you know, good um, stiffness uh, characteristics, we also need to look at material that are significantly lighter to enhance the performance of the product, in our case, um, the bicycle. Similar to the previous example, this is just an amalgamation of uh, the density equation to that of um, axial deflection. So once the two equations are merged, it's just a question of partition or compartmentalizing uh, the functional constraint, the geometric constraint, and isolating um, the material constraint. So this gives us number seven. So um, small m is equal to rho over e. But as I stated previously, when it comes to CS, the objective is to maximize m. So to maximize m, we have to reciprocate small m to give us e over p. So as e gets larger, rho gets smaller, or the density needs to be smaller. So the lighter the material, again, E doesn't change. The value of E is constant, you know, for every given material. So the part of the equation that will affect the maximization of M will be rho, the density. So as I stated, we don't need to worry about, you know, proving and generating um, these indices. There's an extensive catalog on CS where you know you can just choose the needed performance index for your analysis so this is just for illustrative purposes Experts.